Cheers. I'm really trying to do this until the living. It's quite a few. Leave it up. We had a lot of discourse. It's discussed about pearls. So it's not a right. It's not a wine. This is a milk and tea talk. But yeah, here's with the milk and tea. <laughs> right now, say it's not a rare wine talk because that was my inspiration. It's the milk and and tea talk. So yeah. Okay, so we're just talking about somebody um who moved to Spain for love. Would you move for love? Nah. No. It depends. What it on what? It all depends. Oh uh, man. Love is never everything, so I wouldn't do any decision based on love. Mm -hmm. Nah, love is just like twenty percent. There's a lot of eighty percent you have to figure it out. So I would not just want to just move for love like that. I have to consider other things and always choose yourself first. You know, mm -hmm. before you do some type of things, it has to be you first. If it's not beneficial to you, don't do anything. That would det be detrimental to you, and it's gonna cost you a lot. So what it was like, your dream man, he looked how you wanted, his insides were who you want to be with, and he says, I want to move across the world somewhere, but he's like, mm -hmm. I love you so much, I want you to come with me, but you will have to leave your job, mm -hmm. you will have to leave your family, you will have to start all over. Would you do it for this kind of person? Like I said, it's like love is 20 and that's 80 percent. So, so if he fits in the 80 percent what is that like the 80 percent thing like um you know everybody's looking for a dream man right so your dream man must be like oh i want him tall so for some people i want him tall i want him working i want him to pick a theory i want him to do this and doing that so if he checked your boxes or my boxes and then he's what to do first of all and where he's moving to is a place that i don't mind starting over there and i can get a job or doing something there of course I want to move because I mean I'm going to create a family with him. I will remember my own family mm -hmm. as a great family, so yeah. Okay, so in my book club we were reading a book, a book called Communion and the art. I, I don't know if it was Communion or All About Love, but it's by the same author. Mm -hmm. And basically the question that came up was if you had to choose between like career and love, mm -hmm. what are you choosing? Career. Really? Money will never leave you. <laughs> Money is every girl's best friend. Like they say, diamonds are girls' best friends. Money is every girl's best friend. No girl can tell me they don't like money. Yeah. Okay. Love will leave you in shambles, girl. It will. Mm. And I feel like my perspective has changed since then because at first I was like, the kind of consensus was like, well, why can't we have it all, like career and love? And I feel like for me, my life has always revolved around love. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm talking to you know who, and I've started this 75 hard journey. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> I'm so focused though that I don't want to make the same time for him. And I'm like, I cannot, I can't baby you. I can't be available for you all the time okay. because I'm so focused on me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I really have this like hard momentum. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for him to understand at first. But now that I'm like getting into it, it's like I can understand why women do choose okay. themselves. They choose a career. Mm -hmm. They choose creating this I don't know, this ultimate dream life mm -hmm. over, love. over love. I was like, I get it now. Because like, at first I was like, I don't even want a man anymore right now. Like, For sure. I'm just so focused. Like, I don't have time for, for no man. So I was like, I get it now. Yeah. Like always for my friends, you know what? It's very important for every woman to have their own money. Be complete first. So whatever is coming your way is adding a bonus. Mm -hmm. not, look, not for you looking for someone to complete you. Mm -hmm. That's where you're messed up. Mm -hmm. You need to be completely fine, be happy to be alone, so that if anybody is coming in, it's a bonus. It's not like they're actually feeling in a blank space. You're not mm -hmm. supposed to have any blank space in your life. Right. So, have your money, girl. Mm -hmm. It's very important to be yourself. Because I think men respect women who have this shit running for themselves. Mm -hmm. It makes it more easier for them and it makes the love more nicer. Because if a woman cannot afford for herself, she wants a man to afford for her mm -hmm. and when the man stop affording for you start stop giving you those things you start finding yourself falling out of love and most people think they're in love because of the financial gains they get but i think if you have your own money you, you can provide for yourself at that moment those financial things are not the the measurement for their love or something yeah. you know it's not going to be the reason why you're going to be having with flies in your belly mm -hmm because he bought me um, chocolate or he took me shopping or he did this and I'll be so excited 
But because you do that oil cell, you do all that by yourself, so it's nothing new to you. Right. But when he does something like he's asking like how how is your business doing? How's your plan doing? How far with your project? Or do you need finance for that? That's something exciting. That's so that's like a man now looking to you to grow with you or to mm -hmm. help you grow. Mm -hmm. Not just buying dresses because by the time you wear the dress and take a picture, I mean it's good for trash. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that was it, so Okay. Yeah. Well, we didn't even introduce what's your name? Mm -hmm. I know I'm a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Renny Bell, but you can call me Bella. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. you from? <sighs> Le Continent. That's in French. <laughs> <laughs> we, we say Le Continent because we just like, we, we overhype a country so much, like we love it so much. So in Africa we say Cameroon is a continent. On the continent, so yeah, from two, three, seven, Cameroon, all the way. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, so I don't know, you never said it. That's oh, cute. really? The yeah, that's how we do it. If you go on TikTok and you follow Cameroonian TikTok, girl, you will be, you want to, you want to be a Cameroonian. Mm -hmm. To be honest, it's, oh, the hype. We hype ourselves a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, we know we, we know we are there. We know we are the baddest. We know we are the best. <laughs> It's a competition, forget the other things. We don't make a lot of noise because, yeah, anywhere we go, they notice us. We're so quiet, but they notice us. Mm, okay, I love it. <laughs> okay, and you're in Spain. Why? We brought you to Spain. Well, coming to Spain was, how can I say? It wasn't a plan, something. It was more of an escape room. And, well, I was going through a lot back then, which I'm going to upload it here. But, I just had like it was like the easiest way for me to just leave the country in mm -hmm. Italy and I left and I moved to Spain for to study, also do my masters, which I'm done with it. So yeah. And then find a way for yourself because I didn't want to continue living in the country. I was not having it for myself. I always felt like I wasn't in my element. So when I got here I felt like I was right like in my right place you know mm -hmm. sometimes you plan and god has his own plans so yeah here am i mm -hmm. and i got to meet you girl yes right now it's one of you i really consider like <laughs> my friend like she's a she's a real bitch you know i like mm -hmm. real bitches mm -hmm. but yes um i feel like spain really does trap you and one day we went out and right there was like i think i really like spain or something like that you see mm -hmm. and you're like i think i really want to stay or something what was it for you like when you finally finally were like okay I really really like Spain. Well, because you can live here without having a lot of pressure on you. The fact that you don't have that lot of pressure in you to to pay bills and stuff like I mean you there's just something that comes with living in Spain. It's a little bit uh, stress free. Mm -hmm. The stress is there but the pressure is not as much as when I hear my friends living like for example like in the States or uh, maybe in the in the UK or yeah, they, they always complain that they don't have time to no free time, mm -hmm. there's no me time. The moment you say you want to breathe, your bills are piling up. Mm -hmm. So you're just working non stop, you don't have a life. But I mean, since I got here in Spain, I've just been partying non stop. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch was yeah. <laughs> <you know? laughs> partying non stop, and you get to make the money at your pace, mm -hmm. no one is rushing you. Yeah, it's not like Spain is milk and honey, of course, it mm -hmm. has its ups and downs, but then it's something you can deal with. It's not something that is going to make you want to jump off a door. Mm -hmm. No, I always say I would rather be broke in Spain mm -hmm. and broke like anywhere else because even when you're broke here, you still have a quality of life. Exactly. You still can enjoy life, enjoy you still life. can go out, you can find to do things for cheap or for free or just the. I think even the um, the atmosphere is just, mm -hmm. it feels good. It know? feels good. It mm -hmm. feels good. And it's like everyone is walking in the street with their hands open. Mm -hmm. They just want to give you a hug. <laughs> no, it's so nice. But well, they don't have some dirty verses in them. Okay, let's talk about that because when people ask me like, do I experience racism here? I always mm -hmm. say very little. And I don't know if it's like light skin privilege. Because I, I never think too much into light skin, dark skin. But I feel like darker skin people do have a different experience when they mm -hmm. travel places. But I feel like I haven't experienced a lot of racism. I feel like if it's very subtle, like people maybe look or maybe they like, 
you can tell like if somebody has a nasty attitude but i feel like a lot of older spaniards have nasty attitudes anyway mm -hmm. so i'm like i don't know if it's towards me or if they're just like old and have bad attitudes but like what has your experience been like when it comes to racism or have you really or what do you think well i think here in spain they have um the hidden racism well let, let me be clear in africa we don't have racism I've never really like been in a situation where I have to face that. You understand? We have other matters like tribalism, nepotism, stuff like that, but not racism. So moving here, I already put my mind like, okay, you're going to a new place, you're going to the white man's wall. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to like, uh, experience stuff like that. And I used to read a lot about the white, the light skin, black skin privileges. And I got to understand a lot of things. Mm -hmm. When you're light skinned, you can easily pass for a mixed person. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, I don't know if they're so stupid, they don't know the difference. They might think you're white. Mm -hmm. It's probably if you wear a wig or you straighten your hair, they might think you're one of them. Mm -hmm. So it's just like easy. It's like they can say, okay, she's almost like ours, so we can scan it. Mm -hmm. But when you're that darker, it's very evident that you're black. Mm -hmm. So. That you, so I've been in a situation where I get in the metro and you're just holding the stone, the, the pole not to fall mm -hmm. and for the fact that you're holding it, the other white person will rather stand and fall than to hold the pole because you're holding it or they don't even want your hand like to even like slip or touch your hand mm -hmm. and sometimes you get you get, get in the metro, you sit on a chair and they come in, there is an to sit beside you but they rather not sit. You understand than to see and i'm like thank you for not sitting because damn dude, i wonder if this people <laughs> because really they be smelling sometimes <laughs> and I'm, really not, mm -hmm. I'm really not into i'm really not having that so i'm like thank you for giving me the the, the, big, the big space i can mm -hmm. relax i can be free and very good air so mm -hmm. but then that is a racism i see but i really don't think that hard because i'm waiting on the day someone's gonna tell me some bullshit mm -hmm. Well, maybe policia and I will have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I won't take a no for anything. I will give it back to you. Okay, well, I feel like I can't actually relate in that sense because, like, sometimes I'm on a bus and, like, an older woman, it's always, like, older women mm -hmm. more than men, but, like, it will be an open seat and they, they're obviously old and they want to sit down. They're looking for seats, but they won't take a seat next to me. Next to you, yeah. yeah. And I thought that's a good point when you say, like, when you like seeing people think that you're mixed or something like that. I feel mm -hmm. like everybody always like, are you Brazilian? Is your mm -hmm. mom, like, is your mom or dad white? Or, like, are you just, like, just different stuff that I'm not. Yeah. I'm like, I'm black. And they're like, oh, are both of your parents black? And I'm like, yes, both my parents are black. Or they be like, well, what's your origins? And I thought like that's a question that nobody asks in America. Like, what are your origins? Because exactly. we're just black Americans. We're not like, oh, well, what's your origin? What's your this origin? Yeah, I don't know. And yeah, like, they're finding a way to, to pin a white to mm -hmm. you. So consider it. It's so weird. Yeah. When you say it, it's so weird. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm black. And I'm like, I love being black. I'm black. Yeah, black. but they'll be trying to be like, mm, but you should have someone yeah. white in it. So they can consider you as one of them. Mm -hmm. They're sick. No, I think it just comes like down to people just being ignorant, and I feel like in America, I don't know. Obviously, every country is different, but it's just like some stuff we just don't think about. And so when I experience it here, like questions mm -hmm. like that, it's just kind of like I don't know. I just don't take offense, but it's just it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. So anyway, okay, let's talk about dating in Spain. What has your experience been like? I'll go first. My experience dating. Okay, I've been dating since. I got here in 2021 and it was fun at first it was fun at first and I felt like I was very open-minded I was dating I was like a serial I wouldn't say a serial serial dater but I was like I was on the apps I never this is my first time admitting out loud that I would be on the apps not now but before I was like on tinder I was on bumble I've tried hinge and I don't know why that shame was saying that like you use the apps because I guess it makes it gives like a, a look of desperation like yeah. you searching for somebody but at that point i was because i had just got here and i don't know i wanted i wanted company you know yeah and so um i would say a serial date but i definitely was on the apps and i was going on dates and it was fun at first but i think it got to a point where like i wanted to be serious with somebody mm -hmm. and i feel like here it's hard to be serious especially at a young age and i feel like even when i went on dates with like older men they also weren't ready to be serious and i don't know i think it's just like a a very live your life vibe here 
and, and you don't settle down until like you're like in your late 30s even 40 mm -hmm. people have children in their like, late 30s 40s like here you want to like young moms like in america you have people getting pregnant at 16 or younger no. 21 22 no, no, here you wouldn't like it's i've never seen well i see young people with babies but they're like from south america like they're like um latin americans but they're not mm -hmm. like spanish they're not spanish they're not spanish so it's like very rare but anyway people settle down in the late 30s and 40s and so it's just very hard to find somebody who is i guess like on the same page as you would like to be if you want to date seriously mm -hmm. but um yeah it was fun while it lasted but in a serious manner it kind of gets very annoying very old and i feel like the men here are also very childish very but um yeah what's your experience what was your well, experience mm -hmm. I tried. I tried one of the apps when I got here because I was like, I'm over really, I want to get company. But then it wasn't a good one. I just realized going on the apps is more of everybody, any white guy or black guy coming to you, especially the white guys, they just want to have the black girl experience. Mm -hmm. So it's more of like they want, all want a white nice time. So I just feel like going to the apps is maybe when you're really that desperate mm -hmm. and you just want to have something down there. <laughs> you can go, <laughs> seriously, you can go to the apps. But if you're looking for something serious and you go on the apps, uh, well, some people are lucky they find love there. Mm -hmm. But I can say 99% of the time, it's more of one night stands mm -hmm. and just for it and then they, they go their way so mm -hmm. it's not it for me and i really don't think i'm that into spanish men because from the look of things i love ambitious men mm -hmm. but these people are oh my gosh. a little bit lazy lazy i'm trying to sugar coat i don't know i don't like sugar coating but i don't want people coming after me <laughs> but they are lazy people mm -hmm. the men are so lazy they just like to just live the life like but i feel like it's like that because okay for example in america we see people have like such big success at young ages mm -hmm. and i feel like you see things and you have something almost to strive towards i feel like yeah. here because they don't have the example it's like what why do i need to why do i need to and like like i said you you can live here stress free with a very little amount of money i mean with a <clears throat> a whole a thousand euros you're fine yeah you can live you can live on a thousand euros maybe 800 you can, you can live very well here but then now they don't see the need to go higher there's a lot of media crazy here and i don't like that mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to me mm -hmm. no you definitely see it like in their demeanor and how they carry themselves mm -hmm. and that's something i can appreciate about spain that everybody's very casual very comfortable but at the same time it's kind of like and i'm also very casual and comfortable don't get me wrong because ronnie will be like one day she was over here she said you want out like that I'm like, yes, yes, what you mean? But I'm like, I'm always comfortable. She's like, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm like, yeah. I just be looking Now, like when we're going out, you need to respect that. God, you need to be dressed up. You need to be glad. You need to, you need to look glad. Now, when we go out, I do be glam. Mm -hmm. Have we ever been out and I wasn't like, for real? When? Oh, when we go the, last, the last time we went to have a drink, the Irish bar? Yeah. I did the second no, time. The, the second first time, time I was the first time you were glad. The second time I was like, did she just jump out? <laughs> happy <laughs> Now I literally had uh, I don't know, this, this is scary. Just be scary. And then you had the the, the pants on, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wear, no, because I wear my Birkin size 24 7. I need more shoes. I hate buying shoes. It's one thing I don't like to buy is shoes. Mm -hmm. But I wear my Birkin size with everything. Like, I can literally have on a rainbow outfit and I put it on. I'm working sex. I know. But Ronnie Bell, that's what I appreciate about Ronnie Bell, though, because she just, she loves to look good. She loves to oh, carry herself well. Good. It's like, you just can't catch her slipping. Mm -hmm. Me, it's, I'd be like, take it or leave it. But Ronnie Bell, she's really like a queen. She's very like a regal, regal Ronnie Bell, regal woman. Yeah. But yeah, it's cute. It's cute. Okay, let's talk hair. Right now is a um, hairstylist. hairstylist and makeup artist. And makeup artist. And for hair, what do you special uh, specialize in? I everything. You could say everything. <laughs> Literally everything. <laughs> Literally everything that trends. Honestly, the only thing I don't do is um, Batman. I don't shave men, but I can do men's cornrows. I do locks. And for women, 
literally everything I've been saying. Yeah, and I was literally thinking it earlier. Um, I was coming in the house and I was thinking about like what we're gonna talk about, and I was like, well, I'm gonna just let it flow, whatever. But then I started thinking about I actually my hair, and I was like, Ronnie Bell literally does everything. Mm -hmm. Like you can just bring a picture or something, mm -hmm. and she be like, I can do it, and she does it. All right, right now let me be done asking this question. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this hair, and I have this experience with my clients because I have mixed clients, and the girls, the white ones, they always have this problem. They always be like, is it right for me to do braids? Um, am I doing? Am I going against any culture or something? Is it culture inappropriate or something like that? And I really want to hear your side of the story if I can give mine. How do you? What's your take on that? Okay, for me, I feel like I feel like people want you to be mad about it, so it's almost like you you get into this mind frame when you see it, it's like I should be mad about it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I can never bring myself to truly be mad about it because it's like, yes, I'd be looking crazy. But as far as like it bothering me or me going up to somebody be like, why do you have braids on? Or like even like if I see something on social media, leaving a comment like you should be wearing braids. I just feel like it doesn't it doesn't concern me that much. And I feel like yes. most women, they are ignorant to the, the cultural background of it. But I feel like they really do just like the styles. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you like something and you feel good and you want to... I don't know if you want to try something new. Whatever. I just, I don't know. I feel like I just never really cared that much. Besides the fact that they really do look crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother me. I don't know. I just can't find myself to really get like super passionate about it and just bothered by it. I don't know. Okay. Well, I feel like, now don't get me wrong, I do feel like the style belongs to mm -hmm. black people as a lot of stuff does and it gets like taken and twisted and mm -hmm. other people kind of make it um, theirs. I just still feel like it just comes, I feel like most times it really does come from a place of appreciation. I don't know. What do you think? Well me i first what what i'll tell them all the time is i feel bad for them to have to wear your hair all your life the same style mm -hmm. life is too long to have just the same style all your life i mean you just shave it it's like you stuck with the hair it's annoying why not change it up switch it up as we do because i mean we can wear wigs we can wear braids we can look whatever we want to do i mean it's a black and magic of course but my take how i say it is they doing braids and understanding where the braids come from and the history behind braids and everything it's more of like they're liking like a story and doing it because when they do that and when black people do braids of course it's black people it's a culture for they to do braids, even though they used to shave our hair, it's more of like solidarity, I think. For me, I feel like it's something good that they do in the braids. I mean, people can switch it up. Mm -hmm. Times are changing, you know, we don't really have to stick to a steam or something like that. Well, it came up from something bad, but then we can't just remain on the bad side and we can have to move on to a good side, so. Mm -hmm. No, that's why I said I feel like it comes from a place of appreciation because mm -hmm. I feel like black culture, black style, all of this is very contagious. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's very unique. Everybody very wants unique. Uh, um, to be a part of it because it just is so cool, you know. Okay. okay, so continue with hair. When you first came to Barcelona, did you think that you would be, you would gain the momentum that you have now doing hair and makeup? And did you think that it would be something that you would be doing at all? Honestly, coming to Barcelona, I knew that it could be a side hustle, not a main hustle. And I was over it because I was in a bad country and the stress it comes with it. So I just wanted to do something normal. I just wanted to have my life going normal. But I've always been this person I love business. And when I think of working on somebody, it's, it gets me. It gets me mad. So I like to have my time. I like to be flexible with my time and stuff i don't like to be answerable to somebody so it is what it is i think just god just let me do it just feel like that and he's blessing me and i'm i know i believe myself that i'm great at starting from nothing to something mm -hmm. and i've done it so many times it's not my first time starting from zero to something so mm -hmm. yeah 
No, because Ronnie Bell has gained like a lot of um, momentum and clientele, and it really happened in a short period of time. Very short period of time. It was like amazing. from April to now, and it's been wow. Yeah, I think it really. It's been God. <laughs> yeah, it's been God, and I think it really showed me that like. Okay, so the camera cut when we were talking about Ronnie Bell um, growing her clientele super quickly, and she said that it was God, and um. I said that it really comes down to being able to, you can really make it anywhere. It's not about like where you are, but like who you are, your determination, mm -hmm. your drive. Um, and yeah, and I feel like I have learned that in Ronnie Bell because she really came here and just made it happen. And it's very like inspiring. But anyway, then I asked her about like her, um, what has her journey to making friends or how has it been here? And I said for me, it hasn't been easy because I've been here like a little over two and a half years now and I feel like I have two people that I would consider like my real world friends so what is your perspective on gaining friends when you move to a different country well moving here I was scared like I don't know how to make friends funny enough but that's not really not believe me because they say I'm always <laughs> well I believe you because this is what I want to say too Ryan Bell something I like about Ryan Bell is like she's like a no bullshit kind of girl mm -hmm. i feel like you're very direct you say what you mean you don't fake nothing i feel like me i kind of can be like a people pleaser mm -hmm. and ronnie bell is just like nah i'm not there to please people <laughs> sorry no, she just be like i no. give you the way you come but if you bullshit me i give it back to you hundredfold so because one day we went out um talking to the irish bar and this old man andy he started talking to us and I did not want to stop talking to him because I didn't want to be rude. And Ryan Bell was like, um, yeah, I'm going to talk to my friend. Like, can you, like, can you stop talking to me? And I was like, oh my gosh. But it was like, I was relieved because I couldn't bring myself to say it. But Ryan Bell, she's like, she just, she just say, she gives me just like, a little bit. <laughs> like, I was good. I was just direct. Right. It's not rude though, because it's like, you have to speak up for yourself. Of course, you have to. And I feel like I'd be struggling in that department. I feel like I'm getting better. But anyway, friends. But making friends here, it's like, like I said, it's like everyone is moving in the street with their arms, like, or they just want to give you a heart or something like that. But then you need to be very careful while making friends because everyone cannot be your friend. You can have, like, plenty of friends. You can have a lot of people, acquaintances, but not making friends. Mm -hmm. If I have to say for the nine months or ten months I've been in Spain, well, for the people I can say new friends that I've made, I think I have just you and Huege. Well, and Lisa. Yeah, that's it. Marissa? I'm not, I'm not gonna put it in here. You say yeah. It. Okay. Yeah, because, yeah, from the country. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can say that. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe like three mm -hmm. people. No, actually, it's two. Mm -hmm. Because the other one is like a sister. Yeah. So, yeah, so mm -hmm. two. Yeah, I feel like here it's easier to make people. Or friends with people who are um, international rather than uh -huh. like locals. They're local. And I don't, I don't, I guess you're not coming here like you're dying to make friends with people who live here or mm -hmm. local anyway. But it's just like, I feel like you'll never get in those circles mm -hmm. for real. You would never get in the circles for real. And it's, it's draining. Okay, now you're Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> It's an embarrassment. <laughs> Excuse me, it's an embarrassment. I think my writing Spanish has been improving. It's me writing it. It's like I get to talk a lot of Spanish lines. People are from different Spanish countries, and I read Spanish. I'm not. I can say I am writing it actually, but I just can't bring myself to talk. I did, I did that the other day, I gave myself the challenge to actually talk and I did, it was, I was surprised that I could say that mm -hmm. but I think if I keep putting the effort I'll get there mm -hmm. and most of the time when you want to talk you just forget how to start mm -hmm. you forget what to say and you know the words but you just forgot what to say you just forgot how to build up those words and it's, it's crazy but then if it's a time, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to know Spanish school before coming here. I've never learned Spanish before, but mm -hmm. I can say I understand Spanish already. Mm -hmm. We were talking. When I got here, they were just talking and they were singing the music. I mm -hmm. barely understand nothing. But right now, if you got it, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But it's just I can't reply to you like, 
boom, was a sing. Mm -hmm. No, that happens to me because my piano teacher the other day, he was saying stuff. He was like, mm -hmm. if you don't understand stuff, just tell me. And I was like, I understand. I just don't know how to respond to back to you all the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> because I just move to him and I'm like, buddy, buddy, see, see. It's like, <laughs> but do you understand me? I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know how to answer back. And then one thing is, when you make a statement in Spanish, they think you, you understand Spanish. Mm -hmm. So they just start speaking very fast. They go so fast. And I'm like, no, 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 that's what you talk Bro, I'm not, I'm not that level. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. Okay, well, any last words or advice for people who, um, specifically black women mm -hmm. who decide or want to move abroad? How would you tell them to start or would you, t would you suggest that they move abroad? And, um, I don't know, do you plan on staying long term or... What is the idea right now? All right. Now I don't know where what what black women generally in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I'm not from the states, so I can't really talk about the black women. No, just anywhere. But I can. Okay, anywhere. Because I feel like at the, at the end of the day, we all share like similar similar experiences. Similar experience, I think. Well, if you're living home for better, or let's say greener pastures, then you should know that. There's a lot you have to sacrifice. Love abroad is very difficult to find. Mm -hmm. Very, very difficult yes, to find. Yes, we should have gotten to that conversation earlier. But and it's very hard. It's very hard to find love abroad. Everybody just wants to play. Mm -hmm. And you can easily lose focus when, once you're abroad. Because you just feel like, okay, you, you start getting comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you, you forgot why you're here. That's what happened to me. You're not supposed to be on guard. Mm -hmm. Have fun, but always keep your head for mm -hmm. what brought you here in the first place. And well, me, I always say we don't leave home to go back home and stay there. Of course, I will go back home and stay do some investment and stuff. But there is a reason why I left. Mm -hmm. So I must see myself to go back and say I want to set today now. You know, there's a reason why I left. I planned on touring the world, so I'm not going back home anytime soon. But I miss my parents though, but I'll mm -hmm. just go. That's the hard part. It's a damn, that's really hard part. But sometimes you get so overwhelmed, you just sit in your room and cry. Mm -hmm. Like I'm with my mom. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> things just going, like everything is going left, you don't understand nothing. You do everything right, but still you don't get it. And mm -hmm. you're 100 miles away from home. You just can't run to anybody for your heart and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And everyone is always busy abroad. <laughs> it's sad. Everyone is always busy abroad, and you barely can't even catch anybody. Even when you just maybe just need a friend or just like call. Sometimes it seems like you need to an appointment to call somebody. That's abroad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you just need to learn to be especially time alone. Yeah, and you need you you need to learn to take yourself to be alone. Mm -hmm. If you can't be alone, it'd be very difficult for you to live abroad. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. If you're the person who always loves to be with people. You won't see people to be with in the first place. It's very difficult, so come to Upper, find your money first, then the other things will follow. Mm -hmm. And pretty hard for a man because mm, yeah. they are scarce. <laughs> they are scarce for real. There are so many boys, but you can't find a man. That's very true. They are scarce. Very true. Even yeah, when you boys. find them, you will maybe find them in your late forties. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would I be in my twenties and I'm married forties? Of course, age is not just another. Right now, I'm so against dating and marrying older men, but I'm like, girl, what marrying? Um, it's 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 okay. Everybody has a choice. I really want. I don't really want people coming in my head, but everybody <laughs> has this perspective, you know. I mean, I feel like the age gap. Has a, he has a lot to play, you know. Mm -hmm. He's been he's been through it all. He said, "Oh, and when you are just being you at your age, mm -hmm. he might look like okay, you're childish right now. Mm -hmm. You're you're doing too much." And I'll be like, "No, bro, I'm doing. It's normal for me. This is what I see. Mm -hmm. I'm doing. This. I can't. I haven't lived in the future. I'm living now, but you've already lived in my now. Mm -hmm. But I haven't lived in your now. So it's it's always a problem for me. It's mm -hmm. also the same as friendship." When you're making friends with people who are like five years below you, sometimes the thing they do, yeah, really you will realize you want to understand how to reason their brain, mm -hmm. but you need to take yourself like five years back to mm -hmm. the age to understand how do you were behaving back then. And 
not every man will do that. Mm. Some men will be like, no, you need to grow up. <laughs> they want you to be yeah. their age, to skip years and be their age. Like, mm -hmm. well, kudos to the ladies who do that because, I mean, you guys are like, like, doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day. <laughs> but it's quite difficult for me. I mean, I, I used to say two years max. Later on, I walked to three years max. After I moved to five, now I'm seeing myself less than seven years max. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll get to 10 one day and I'll get comfortable mm -hmm. again. Just maybe. Mm -hmm. But that. at the end of the day, it's just finding the man that understands you better mm -hmm. and you guys flow. So I know of people who are dating men that are like 25 or 30 years older than them and they are married to them. So And they're living it up, they're living their best life and they understand it. Some people prefer the other men because I actually understand with them because the men have seen it all. Mm -hmm. Understand, so they, they, they know how to treat their lady. Mm -hmm. All these young guys are just so excited, they mm -hmm. just want to, they're just trying to live life. So, mm -hmm. other ones are just trying to live life, and nobody wants to take it too serious. And for sure, women always get mad trouble for men. If you Google would tell you, they get mad yeah. at 40, but honest truth is, they never get mad trouble. So, just do what works for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, last question What have you learned? Oh, this is the real last question. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about yourself since moving abroad? And um, that's it. What have you learned about yourself since moving abroad? Well, I've learned a couple of things a lot, just a lot of things. I just realized I have a lot of superpowers. We all do, and we just neglect that. Because being alone really lets you think about a lot of things, reflect about a lot of things, and you, when you look at yourself and how you're going about stuff and how you do things, you get to realize your superhero power, like, like the like the business stuff. I didn't have to pull stuff like this. They always tell me that you do you 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 just have your way of going around things. But I was just never believing them once. So I really sad I took the time to go through my journey and everything. And I'm like, I am made for great things. I am going out there, and I just find myself going there with ease. Not easily with ease, but I just know how to bring the challenges together to make it work for me. So, yeah, that's what I've been I love it. And I find that so true. Um, I think, like you said, when you move abroad by yourself, you definitely have to learn how to be um, by yourself, but you also have to learn how to make things happen for yourself. For sure. So you definitely do see um, what you're capable of mm -hmm. because it's almost like you don't have a choice. You don't have to try your survival instincts, you just mm -hmm. kick in and you just have to fight non stop because if you fall or you stop, you're just gonna go hit rock bottom mm -hmm. and you don't want them abroad. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to be homeless abroad. Yeah. So easy. And I really never want to be that. I don't want to. When I move around and see people living in the streets, I'm just like, what? I'm so sad. I wonder how their 20s were. What were mm -hmm. they doing in their 20s? What happened at the on the street? Because Barcelona has like a homeless. A mm -hmm. lot of them on the streets, and I'm like, how do they find themselves here? Mm -hmm. I really want to have a conversation with them, but then you know, rest to privacy. I really want, to, I don't want, ha I don't want to have problem, problems with anyone. But then, I just understood that when you don't pay your rent, you're kicked out. You don't have a job, you don't pay your rent, you're kicked out. So what next? On the streets. Mm -hmm. And if you're on the streets and you still can't get yourself back on your feet, you just become a homeless person just like that. And it's very easy. easy. It's very easy to be on the street. So and it's like if you think it's easy here, it's even easier like in America. But um, yes, Ronnie Bell, mm -hmm. that's it. Okay. Thank you for coming today. You're welcome. Do you want to plug your what's your um hair page? Just in case y'all come to Spain or um, you are in Spain or surrounding areas, you can get your hair and makeup done by Bella's Glamour on Instagram, TikTok. And Facebook, it's Bella's Glamour. I'm gonna um, tag it. It'll be on the screen somewhere and also in the Bye. description box. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was so fun. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, girl. I'm gonna edit it today. <laughs>